got me something for in there. Free samples over here. Tonka bar, buffalo meat. Come give it a try. Free samples of buffalo. It's great for riding a bike. Come get a free sample. Here's a brave guy. He wants to try this buffalo meat out. Come give it a shot, man. Beef? Buffalo. buffalo it's way better than beef, and it's better for you. All naturally cured. It's uh, like a new all-natural, high-protein, low-carbohydrated energy bar, and it's made from uh, prairie-raised buffalo and tart sweet cranberries. Less cholesterol than sockeye salmon or skinless chicken breast. It's based on a Native American recipe, Wasna, and they would mix up berries and fruit with the buffalo, because the acid in the fruit would act like a natural preservative. We have a brand new flavor, apple orange. We're brand new here in New York. It's called a Tonka bar. Isn't that good? So what's the word Tonka mean? Uh, tonka means big. Big? Or big or great. Where are you from? We're from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in southwestern South Dakota. You're listening to Kiwi FM Radio, the voice of this great Lakota nation. Coming at you off of Porcupine View at 90.1 on your FM dial. The high today, 98 degrees. You know, if you think of the exact geographic center of the United States, it's the center of the northern tip of the Black Hills, which is Pine Ridge. This is Keeley FM Radio, the voice of this great Lakota nation. The Pine Ridge Reservation is one of the most isolated places within the 48 states of the United States. It encompasses an area about 125 miles long and 75 miles wide. It's the second largest Indian reservation in the country. This is home of the Oglala Lakota people. The Lakota people's creation story says they were born from the Black Hills. And there's this relationship that the Lakota people have with the buffalo. They believe they're interdependent nations, that as long as the buffalo survive, the people will survive. The last time the Lakota people had a functioning economy, it was based on the buffalo. Buffalo provided their food, housing, tools, shelter, medicine, toys, clothes, everything. Their entire economy was based on the buffalo. And the buffalo were destroyed by a government policy to open the West up for settlement. General Sheridan said something to the effect, for every buffalo you kill, you kill two Indians. In a very short period of time, we practically destroyed all of them. And then we created a system in which our government provided rations. So the reservation was never designed to have a functioning economy. It was designed to support the non-Indian economies that surrounded it. When Oglalas were put on this reservation over 100 years ago, everything was taken away. The whole way of life, the culture, the language, the spirituality the economy. Now our people have to take our own destiny into our own hands because we've seen what a hundred years of dependency has done. You have 75% unemployment rate. You have people living on $5,200 income a year. You have families that have three to four generations living in one household because there's no housing. We have to change this. So the idea behind Tonka, you know, big, biggest, is could we build a business that becomes strong enough to have a positive impact on the economy of the community, the health of the land, and the health of the buffalo. So yeah, it's a big idea, but we don't really have any room for little ideas right now. 
I was trying to see if there's a deadline on the CD. Mark was doing marketing for nonprofits on the reservation. And him and I were working together for about eight years on marketing campaigns. During one of our Chamber of Commerce meetings, our buffalo producers were saying they needed more avenues for sales for their buffalo meat. So we looked at some of the traditional foods, and wasna is buffalo meat and berries. And we thought, what if that was in a bar form and it came as a snack product? We spent about a year developing a product, and we figured out how to package it. And the annual Black Hills Power was about a month away. And so we went to the Black Hills Power, it's a very big power, like 10,000 people. But we weren't really ready to do a launch. We didn't go there to sell anything. What we thought we'd do is get a bunch of feedback, meet with a bunch of people, and try to figure out how to raise the money for a launch. And we passed out product, and people got really, really excited. The local paper picked it up, then the statewide paper picked it up, and then the media completely blew up on it. We made the cover of the taste section of the New York Times. Associated Press picked it up. Once it got an AP, it went literally around the world. It was on the cover of Pravda. We had 4,000 simultaneous hits, which brought our website down because we never imagined that we would get the response. All right. All right. This is here, Steve. I can go ahead and email you the information. This was the fall of 07, and we're starting to really take off. Every month is twice as big as the month before. We had invested all this money and we were making more product. We moved our manufacturing to a bigger plant. We're scrambling 100 miles an hour and we're trying to keep up. We get to August of 08 and the economy completely locked up. Everything just stopped in midair. The news each day seems unrelentingly bad. Many small businesses are already in danger of being swamped or completely swept away. Consumer confidence has plunged. This could be the most serious recession in decades. July of 08, I bet we did $20,000. And August of 08, I bet we did one or two. In every entrepreneur's life, there's what I call the proverbial cliff moment, which is, do you stop or do you step off that cliff? Because once you step off that cliff, there's no going back. Because, you have so much money into it that you can't turn around now. In poker, it's called all in. <laughs> <laughs> That's where that additional comes out of, you know, the 6,000, 6, now it's 7,000, plus the 12,500. If we failed, it would probably be what is expected because it's the norm here. There's a long history of good ideas on this reservation. Not very many of those good ideas ever get executed. And I kind of felt like if we didn't move forward, we we're gonna be saying we woulda, coulda, shoulda for the rest of our life. So you borrow over a million dollars, sign everything away, put it all on the line, or say, well, it's just not for us. It's the scariest thing in your life to say, we're going for it. But I thought, okay, if we don't go for it, what's gonna change? Nothing. So yeah, if I have to put up my car, my house, whatever, yeah, I'll do it. And that's right at the time when social networking was coming about. MySpace was really hot. Facebook was just starting up. And the employees were telling us, we really need to market through, you know, these social networks. And I'm like, market through, what are you talking about? right through here. And they kept saying, just let us show you what we can do. They were talking about the product, just having conversations, leading people to our webpage. And we can talk to people in Arkansas and 
you know, Gallup, New Mexico, in Canada, in Oregon, about this healthy snack product. Which is amazing because we're one of the most isolated areas in the United States. But for the first time, the internet brought down those barriers of isolation and people could order online and we could just ship it out. Social media marketing kept Native American natural foods alive for two years until the large wholesale market started loosening up. We've never bought an ad anywhere outside of Google. Those 100,000 people a month who come to our website and interact with us on our social media, that's the core of how we've built this brand to be in stores in all 50 states. REI is one of our largest clients. We just got into Whole Foods. Once they'll start opening up, that's our biggest revenue stream now. We have to put together this power, you know, this presentation for the Costco show on the 11th. We're building a natural food company, a national brand in the middle of a USDA food desert. Most of the people in our company, not only have they never worked in a food company, a lot of them have never even had a full-time job like this. Before I started working at Tonka Bar, I bus tables, wash dishes, I did a bed and breakfast for a huge resort. Back-breaking work for a little bit of money. So when Native American Natural Foods came along, I ended up getting a new car, paid it off. Got my own trailer and paid it off. And it's huge, it's awesome. I have money to live off of without having to depend on the government. But they don't have a lot of stuff here on the reservation that you need to live. Everyone on the reservation leaves when they get paid. You have to drive an hour and a half most every payday. They don't have a shoe store in the reservation. You'd have to go up to Rapid to get shoes to keep your feet dry. It's estimated that somewhere between 250 and 300 million dollars a year goes on to the reservation in everything from EBT to federal grants to private grants. It turns over less than once and then just leaves the reservation. And so it doesn't create jobs or opportunity. A healthy economy turns the dollar over more than seven times in a community, which means your dollar circulates through your area seven times. You receive it, you cash it, you spend money on food, clothes, gas, entertainment, childcare. All of that is turning the dollar over more than once. Right now, we're shipping blended shipments out of D2000. So to really have a thriving economy, we have to have for-profit businesses so that our children and grandchildren can stay in their community and have jobs to support their family. They can buy groceries, uh, buy clothes, buy shoes. So to change the future here, we have to create a private sector. So then That's why we got into Native American natural foods. I view myself as a fourth or fifth generation activist. My parents always taught us that you can focus on problems and get overwhelmed by them or focus on solutions towards them. The poverty conditions here are inhumane. They're not acceptable. I think we're short like 5,000 houses. We have the shortest life expectancy in North America. None of that is acceptable. So let's attack those problems. And that's what the community here is doing. So we don't view that Native American Natural Foods is operating in isolation. It isn't like we're gonna do this and create this change on our own. We have to do it together. It's like with Thunder Valley, as we grow and our employees grow, where are they gonna live? Where are they gonna buy houses? Thunder Valley started as a community development corporation. Our goal has always been to build a, a new development. 
an actual physical new community here on Pine Ridge. Native American Natural Foods helped incubate Thunder Valley. We provided them office space and any kind of help we could. We also recognized that we didn't want to just do housing here. We didn't want to just create a housing development. We wanted to create places for businesses to be too. What this development that we're doing here at Thunder Valley represents is really about bringing together all kinds of different um, diverse members of our community and collaborating on what we want for the future of our tribal nation. There's not one rental on Pine Ridge. There's not one home for sale. And so a big part of what we're doing in this development is we're saying that opportunity already exists there. In fact, over half of our workforce that we currently have on Pine Ridge has already a job and has the ability to either rent, own, lease, or buy. And we need to meet them. This is a straw bale house. And so what we're doing in housing to is to respond window. to a market that already exists. There's one house under construction, but in the next seven years, you're gonna see a community be built here. And there's gonna be dozens and dozens of families that are gonna have homes that wouldn't have homes otherwise. A lot of our employees look at Thunder Valley as something they would probably want to participate in the future because Thunder Valley is providing this new vision of a place where you could own a home, a place where you could live in a safe, healthy community. There is way more opportunity on Pine Ridge than people really think that there is. All you economists, all you bankers, all you investors, all you people that says that, there, that this can't be done on Pine Ridge, BS, it can be done and we're gonna do it. And that's the solution. That's a solution for housing. That's a solution for jobs. It's about empowering people to take control of their own lives. Not waiting for somebody to come save us. Not waiting for somebody to come fix our problems for us. What is poverty? It's the perception that nobody has any options, that, there, that all your options have been taken away and that your choices are limited to just living in a welfare state. And I think that's really what we're changing with each entrepreneur, whether it's Thunder Valley or Native American Natural Foods or a group of quilters or somebody providing horseback riding to tourists. Each one of those is, there are options, there are opportunities. Absolutely, you want to be part of changing growth for the company. I feel honored, you know, I feel good about it. Five, ten years from now, I'd at least want to have a home. Maybe by the time I have that, then I can move on to growing myself as a family. It wouldn't bother me so much if I failed, but to know that I let down the staff, that's what would hurt. That's what would really hurt. You know, the blood of our ancestors lay on this land. They gave their lives so that our people could thrive. Well, I don't want to let them down. It's my responsibility to take that and to build something that will enhance our lives. Yeah. Oh. To make life better for the next generations. Against all odds, we exist. And so you think about coming from Kyle in the middle of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, you have to say, yeah, that's successful. We finally turned the corner, we're profitable. We've created 13 jobs. We're in a project right now to create a path to ownership for all of our employees so that this business will be there forever and thrive and help the community so that it never ends up in the hands of external investors who might decide that it should be located somewhere else. We're gonna break $2 million in sales this year. But we feel like we need to get up to you know, $20 million or beyond so that we are an economic force that becomes part of the economic reemergence of the Oglala Lakota people. 
So yes, we think we're successful, but we also think we just got started. A lot of people believe that the buffalo have returned in order to help heal the people because they're dependent on each other. So now that the people have helped restore the buffalo, the buffalo are gonna help restore the people. It may sound like a romantic theory, but it's real economics. This film was created with the support of American Express. Wherever the journey leads, American Express is proud to help serve small businesses.